In the previous video, we talked about the how civil disobedience movement started in India by Mahatma Gandhi and how the movement lost its pace. In this video, we will talk about which social groups participated in the civil disobedience movement and with what motive and how political thinkers tried to forge a sense of collective belonging among Indians. So let's start. In the countryside, rich peasant communities such as the Patidars of Gujarat and the Jats of Uttar Pradesh participated in the movement because they were producer of commercial crops and hard hit by the trade depression and falling prices. For them, the fight for Swaraj was a struggle against high revenues. But they were deeply disappointed when the movement was called off in 1931 without the revenue rates being revised. So when the movement was restarted in 1932, many of them refused to participate. The poorer peasantry found difficulties in paying their rent due to the depression and the decrease in the cash income. They wanted the unpaid rent to the landlord to be remitted. However, the Congress was unwilling to support the no-rent campaigns due to the fear of upsetting the rich peasants and the landlords. The business class wanted protection against imports of foreign goods and a rupee sterling foreign exchange ratio that would discourage imports. Therefore, to organize business interest, they formed Indian Industrial and Commercial Congress in 1920 and the Federation of the Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industries in 1927. However, the spread of militant activities, worries of prolonged business disruptions, growing influences of Socialism amongst the young Congress member and the failure of the Round Table Conference led to the withdrawal of support to the movement by the business class. Women also participated in protest marches, manufactured salt and picked foreign clothes and liquor shops. Many went to jail. But this public participation did not change the position of women was visualized. Congress was reluctant to allow women to hold any position of authority within the organization. The Dalits did not participate in civil disobedience movement because for long the Congress had ignored the Dalits or untouchables for fear of offending the Sanatanis the conservative high caste Hindus. Gandhi declared that Swaraj would not come for a hundred years if untouchability was not eliminated. He called the untouchables Harijan and organized Satyagraha to secure them entry into temples and access to public wells, tanks, roads and schools. In 1930, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar organized the Dalits into the Depressed Classes Association. He clashed with Mahatma Gandhi at the second round table conference by demanding separate electorates for Dalits. Gandhiji began a fast unto death because he believed that this would disunite the Indian masses. Ultimately, Pune Pact was signed between Ambedkar and Gandhiji in September 1932, which gave the depressed classes reserved seats in provincial and central legislative councils, but they were to be voted in by the general electorate. After the decline of the non-cooperation Khilafat movement, a large section of Muslim faith alienated from the Congress. In 1927, it appeared that unity between Congress and Muslim could be forged. In 1928, all hope of resolving the issue at the All Parties Conference disappeared 
when Amma Jaikar of the Hindu Mahasabha strongly opposed efforts at compromise. Large section of Muslim not participated in the civil disobedience movement as they feared the dominance of the Hindu majority. Now we will talk about the sense of collective belonging which came partially through the experience of united struggles. History and fiction, folklore and songs, popular print and symbols all played a part in the making of nationalism. The nationalist historians urged the reader by writing glorious development in ancient times in art and architecture, science and mathematics, craft, and tried to take pride in India's great achievement in the past and struggle to change the miserable conditions of life under British rule. In late 19th century India, nationalists began recording folk tales sung by bards and they toured villages to gather folk songs and legends which gave a true picture of traditional culture that had been corrupted and damaged by outside forces. The identity of the nation, such as image of Bharat Mata, acquired many different forms as it circulated in popular prints and was painted by different artists came to be seen as evidence of one's nationalism. As the national movement developed, Nationalist leader became more and more aware of such icons and symbols in unifying people and inspiring in them a feeling of nationalism. So that's all in this chapter. Thanks for watching the video.